know that we do our best. We'll put them under pressure. The game is about being effective, being aggressive, winning the ball, getting on with the play. We'll put them under pressure. That's a good way to start the show, isn't it, Philip? Don't come on at all. <laughs> you leave. You're on the you're on the mutey. No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can I? I want to start the show with this, Philip. Right. Has anyone seen Arsenal? Has anyone seen Man City? Has anyone seen Harland? Pep? Lego Man? All the Arsenal fans, has anyone seen them? Because they have gone missing in Europe. Has anyone seen them? Philip, have you seen them? Um, I think they're hiding in a bunker, especially Bernardo Silva, with the most yeah. pathetic attempt at a penalty seen since God knows when. I mean, my God, what was he I, trying I, to do? I, are you lucky you didn't do the watch along to it, Philip? Three hours. Yeah. No, I came in just as the penalty shootout was starting, so I got the good bit. <laughs> you did get the good bit. Um, good evening, Mr. Brady. How are you? How was bingo last night? Any big winners? Anyone walking out? Uh, with? No. No, the, the, only, the only bit of joke I had was there's a big Liverpool fan goes there. Yeah. We normally meet up with that. There's another Spurs fan I meet up with her bingo as well, so... The two of us met the Liverpool fans coming in, and I put my hands up. I said, I'm very sorry for your troubles, you know. Like, it's a miserable. He says, Yeah, nearly as fucking bad as us. So I kept going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, oh, no. um, yeah, was... I, I just want to. Um, this was our tether, Philip, after the game. This was, this was, 
this was no, not Arteta. This was Daniel Levy after the Arsenal game that like Harry Kane and Eric Dyer, I should say, after the Arsenal game last night. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you have to say, you have to say that Agent Harry and Dyer did their business last night. Anyway, you know, did, they did the business. Know, Philip, I, Harry Dyer had a fantastic match, I believe. It, it did. He got big. Pra- I was reading it today. He's got massive praise in the German press. Yeah. Now yeah. I'm a bit confused. Do they know football at all? Have they ever heard of Harry Dyer? No. Well, <laughs> oh shit! Sorry, don't let me say. We we changed it to seven to stop this happening. <laughs> I wasn't going to leave you, by the way. We moved it to seven to stop this from happening. This is what I only finished work ten minutes ago. Well, I didn't finish Honest, it. It's still going. Yeah. Honest to God, <laughs> Philip, you could have. You couldn't you could write that. You couldn't really write that, could you? Well, time. It, would, it wouldn't be a stream without you having to come out to take a phone call, to be honest. No, no, no. It's, it's just pretty busy at work, unfortunately. So, well, fortunately. Anyway, anyway Colin, uh, just a big up to Colin. Well, it is Colin because I he's become a it. YouTube. He's become a watch along member. It's a big up, Colin. Oh, Welcome well. to the family. And um, Colin. Join me and Philip on the watch along next season. If you get a watch along membership, you do come on and join me and Philip for a watch along. You do. That is the whole end of getting a watch along membership. You get to join us. It does ca- carry a government health warning now coming on with us too. But anyway, it does. You may get your, you may get beheaded from the Godfather <laughs> at one point as first lose. You get to see. You get to see the famous Philip Brady, I'm leaving. Ten minutes later, he's still there. <laughs> it's something um, like that Monty Python, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Yeah, okay, see ya. It's like me in the phone, apparently. I'm like that. I say to somebody, I'll see you later, and they continue the conversation. <laughs> anyway, let's see who's in the chat. <laughs> go on, go on. I'll let you read them out. I pick them, you read them, Philip. Wayne saying, good evening, everyone. Hope you're all well. I'm still laughing at the gooners bottling it again. Yeah, yeah. That's, um, and they'll have a Wembley once and Evelyn done it. Well, fifth, there's a pretty slim chance of earning a CL spot now. It wasn't last night worth it. I love Eric Dyer and Eric Dyer loves me. Actually, I read something earlier just before I came on there. that If West Ham and Liverpool win their games tonight, now not necessarily go through in the tie, but win the say West Ham win 1-0 and Liverpool yeah. win 2-0, that's actually a huge boost for our fifth place. I've read that as well. Philip. Thing is we're, so we're, we're divided by eight and Germany divided by seven or vice versa. I forget what mm. it is. but So we need West Ham and Liverpool to win tonight, but not, not go through on, on aggregate. You know? Not that I want the West Ham and Liverpool to go through, by the way. No. But to win don't. tonight and go out would be lovely. Oh, yeah, that's it. I win tonight. And Villa, mm. Aston Villa are losing 1-0 at the moment. Yeah, so they're tied up. Right, I think we're um, losing one. Let's check it here now. Yeah, Gerard O'Connor, yeah. stop, stop. You're upsetting my stop baby. You're upsetting my baby. <laughs> done it. You've done it again. You've done it. I've again. done it. I'm always upsetting somebody. Mm. Even Mrs. Tron would tell you. I am always. I would start a war. My mother, bless her, um, always said to me when I was small, "You would start a war in heaven." That's what she used to say to me when I was a kid. There you are. Yeah, I was. She said, "You would start an argument in an empty room." <laughs> Fighting the phone box. Yeah. yeah. Mrs. Tron's looking at me mm-hmm. nodding. No, she's not sure. Stephen Cartwright. Yeah. Sorry. Stephen's coming out with a bit of German here. Guten Abend. Guten Abend yourself, Stephen. Yeah. And Buten, what 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 did Del Boy used to say when he was going into to bon, um Bonsoir um, he said au revoir. No, he was going into <laughs> Holland. What what was he saying to people? Ajax. Oh, Ajax. Ajax. <laughs> Ajax. <laughs> Do you remember at the end uh, of that, Philip, when they were when they done the diamonds right and they knew there were fake diamonds, right? Yeah. And the, they were chasing the well, fellow. The, the, the money was fake. Yeah, but also, yeah. But they thought they were chasing them and they weren't they were chasing this old fella. Ah, that's right. Ah, that's yeah. 
brilliant. And um, then he chopped. The you know, remember when the woman, the German girl, was pregnant, and Uncle yeah. Albert said, "I can speak German." <laughs> what is your name? I swear to God. Do you know what? I was thinking the other night, Philip, we are going to talk about football, by the way. Yeah, eventually. We'll I, was, get down to I, was, eventually. I was watching it the other night. Did don't You couldn't run Only Fools and Horses now. Or, no. or, um, no, no. or, what or, or 40 Towers. 40 Towers. 40 Towers. Uh, Porridge would be another one that would be, that would be uh, hard to put through, you know? Yeah. It's just all got so politically correct now at the moment. Yeah. Philip doesn't do PC, by the way, everybody. No, I don't. Philip is not a PC sort of person. The only PC in this house is the personal computer. You know? Yeah. And that's mm. you. Right, who we got? Who else we got in there? <laughs> um Wayne Bonner. I hear I heard that there's a new bottle making factory opening your Arsenal Stadium. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, we can have fun tonight. Mm. And Phil is saying even Dermo and Philip, even you, Phil. Big up Phil Coy is part Coy's. of the Phil Army. There's only one yeah. Phil in the chat, but you are the leader of that army, Phil. Let you know about that. <laughs> and Wembley won this, and even Phil oh, as sorry. well. Thanks, Wembley. Hope sorry, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. What? I'm wrong. There's two Phils. There's Philip, two you, Phils. Philip, yeah. and Phil. There's so two. there you go. There, see, hmm. you've got an army now, Philip. You you can That's start it. invading Arsenal now with that. <laughs> you and Phil. Gerald O'Connor saying, what you make a levy not getting a copper coin for Delhi? I think that was always going to be on the cards, you know, because you're not mm. going to play the number of games. I don't know that. I, I know there was an interview done with Delhi there the other day now, but uh, you know, all I yeah. can hope, I hope the guy gets back into playing again. He's too good a talent not to be playing. Yeah. He he was on Sky Sports. He looked in a good place, actually. To be fair, yeah, he, he sounded all right. Yeah, sounds about I, right. I tell you, did you see the what? Did you see when um, Poch came on? How much love there was between him and Poch? Yeah, could oh, yeah, you see? Bit. The scenario that Deli Ali, who's out of contract at Everton, end up at Chelsea. Yeah, possibly. Chelsea need Chelsea can't afford to buy anybody. They'll be looking for free transfers like that. Possibly, Do you think Poch yeah. would go from thinking? I'll tell you, it would be the ultimate reincarnation. It's just I'd love to see Deli Ali come back and be as good as he was, but please do not at Chelsea. Not at Chelsea. No. Anyone hey, hey, Chelsea. One, what I love what he did, he has an alarm on his phone. Eleven o'clock. Every morning it goes off. It's the first day of the 2026 World Cup. Yeah, that's right. That, that. Is, that is his. I mean, I was listening to talk sport, Ali McCoist. That would be the comebacks of all comebacks if he was that's to right. get there. Yeah. yeah. But I think, I think everyone would love to have see Delhi on the back. Instead of having Delhi on the back of his shirt, he should just write Lazarus. <laughs> yeah. Or Rocky. Or Rocky. Yeah. 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 Um, here we who else we've got. So big up Gerald. Uh we've got Matthew in as well. Big up Matthew. Hello, comrade Philip and Comrade Dermot. Hey Matthew. Yeah. I feel India. Matthew's very obsessed obsessed with the USSR, Philip. They're back in the Do USSR. You know? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's I wonder mm. I think does he look at us a bit like Yeltsin and, and Stalin and Yeltsin or Gorbachev? Don't, don't start those comparisons now, Jenny Mac. Come on. I don't know. I think you look a bit like Gorbachev. <sighs> You look a bit like Stalin then. No, I look a bit Yeltsin. No, you're more Stalin. Yeah. <laughs> we just need we just need to put a big love bite in the top of your head. <laughs> Do you remember when Dale Boy said that's a pillow? It's got a big love bite. <laughs> oh god, god. Now what else we got? Matthew saying it's so good to see bottle Arsenal bottle in European matches. Yeah. Yeah. Although you know it was a tight match last night, but you know, mm. let's play to Bayern. They're saying they're the worst Bayern Munich team ever, but there's actually so the more points at the moment that they have when they won the league last season, so it can't be that bad. Yeah. You know, it's just the Leverkusen are so good. Mm. And Matthew is saying Germany always be like for the fatherland. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But when the going gets in. tough now, oh Lilla, two 0 up on Villa. Oh, Jeez. that's yeah, they are. See, on seventy-one so is minutes, that three gone, two. Yeah. Is that three two Lille now? That's the Lille ahead and the tie now. Actually, I was in Lille last week. It's a beautiful town. Lovely town. Really nice. I, I would love to do for them. Is there anywhere you have not been in the whole world? Um, uh, Mount Everest. Will you go there? <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I've been more, Well, no, 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 I wouldn't go there. No, no way. You wouldn't no. climb it? No, no way. Too cold. Would you ever climb Croke Patrick? No, no. No, I, I don't would, like heights. Love... I don't like heights. I would... No, don't you? No, no, I couldn't. But you love ladder. flying. 
you love flying. Oh, that's okay, really. I'm fine. I love flying, but I hate heights. So, you know, it's just one of them things. Uh, mm. Been to Crow Patrick, all right, but uh, looked up at us, and that was about it. Yeah. And waved at um, it. Huh? And waved at it. Hello. <laughs> You couldn't see the top, but it was one of the misty old May old days, as you know, you get down I, there, you know. This is years ago I went to Paris and I took one look at the Alpha Tower and I said, I ain't going to the top of that. Yeah. There's yeah, no way yeah. in hope and hell we get me to the top of that thing. And Ed M says, Yeah, Lil's up. Is that, it is a Island, is that where Ireland fans were based in Euro twenty sixteen? Did we play a game? Been, there? Yeah, there could have been actually, yeah. Yeah. It's in I the kind wishing... of eastern part of it's on the kind of the, the eastern part of France, close to the Belgian border. I was I was watching um, the other night. I was a bit bored, so I started watching YouTube Irish fans abroad in major tournaments, right? Yeah. Because it's been a while since we've been the one Philip, and I just oh, yeah. wanted wanted to know what it was like. You know, for, we are well, next Irish international. You, me, Dave are going to an Ireland and away game. You have, to, now, you have to sign the official secrets act before you go now. Yeah, well, I know that. Yes, we know that. Mm -hmm. We have to. Yeah, we do know that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, um, yeah, my, the story, like... my, my best my best story of funny stories in Moscow at an island match 20, uh, 20 years ago, it must be. Yeah. And after the game, everyone decided they wanted to go to a nightclub out in somewhere. So we hailed down this taxi anyway. Anyway, the taxi driver was pissed out of his mind. Literally, I pissed out of his mind. And he drove he drove on the wrong side of the road, wandering all over the place on the way out to the nightclub, you know. And we got there. You know, and then the fields of Athen Rye, all you could hear was Irish, Russian, everybody singing the fields of Athen Rye. It was hilarious, man. It really was. You know, I, the I Irish think fans are absolutely brilliant when they go abroad. They really yeah. don't cause any trouble and they bring such colour to the whole thing, you know. Yeah. The best bit is Jack Charlton. I know you've said the same story in, in Russia as well, but when they went to Sardinia was at Calgary and they're all in the cages and they got the English fans there and the Dutch fans there and the Irish fans and it's like it's a really hot day and it's the last thing you want to do is be put into a cage to, to be fair that's the last thing you want to do it said all you've got was all the Irish got together and start going meh meh that's it yeah, we got that the sheep noises we got that as yeah. well. even the Russian police were smiling and those guys don't normally no you know they were smiling at that, you know. I, I tell you what, it, it was so much, and they were lull lullabying the little baby to sleep, these Irish fans, right? They got this fan, right? He was in the balcony, and there were thousands of Ireland fans, right, on this bit stretch of road. Every time this boat came out, there'd be a roar going out, a cheer go up. And when yeah. he went in, they started booing. So he, he was coming in and out. He kept coming out again. Out. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. It's like and another it's like, one. We were, in, we were in Prague for one of the Irish games. Yeah. They were doing a double header, Bratislava in Prague, and there was a McDonald's beside the ground, you know. So we were there a couple of hours before the match. Mm. And all you could hear in the ground, a, a conga line of Irish fans went into the McDonald's singing Big Macs for the boys in green. <laughs> it was fun there. Stand, it was singing, they were singing Stand Up for the Dutch police or something like that at the time. And yeah, the Dutch oh, police yeah. are like looking at them thinking. Can we not have these all the time? <laughs> so they were doing a conga line around the square in Prague, and the and the police were out there. You know, the police are out for every football match, thinking there's going to yeah. be trouble. You know, they knew there wasn't going to be when they, they were grabbing the police and making them go around in the conga line with them. I I tell you one thing: we must have the I Euro '88, our first major tournament, right? The, how mad! Every the credit union must have run out of money for that tournament. There was more kitchen extensions done that year in Ireland than any other year since. Yeah. And no. also, very quickly, I think today's an important day. Philip knows what I'm on about as well. Um, maybe maybe not a lot of you realise, but 43 years ago, there was a, a fire at a nightclub in the north side. Of, is it the north side? The north side? Oh, yeah, Artain. Yeah, no, Artain, Artain, north side of Dublin. No, it wasn't Artain. It was in Brooklyn. Yeah. No, it was in Artain. It's not. Oh, Mrs. Tron no, says it's not, but it was our It is our It is our time. It is. The old, um, the old, uh, it was an old nightclub. Started. It was a factory, and it was yeah. turned into a nightclub. But anyway, there was a fire there on Valentine's night where, uh, oh, how many people? 40, 40, 48 people died. Yeah. Um, today they got justice. 
today or yeah, 48 you know, I'm just wondering what that means, Dermot. Unlawful killing. Does that mean that the people that own the, 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 the site or did own the site at the time mm. are now liable for criminal charges? Because yeah, apparently it came, so. out, it, it came out tonight that the Butterly family that owned the place at the time tried to get the unlawful killing verdict thrown off the list of a possible verdicts. And the judge says, no, it's staying there. And they couldn't release that news until tonight because it obviously would have prejudiced the whole thing. Mm. But the family knew what was coming. And try, imagine trying to get them to amend that, to leave off that, uh, the most serious of the of the, of the the judgments, leave it off the of the, uh, the, 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 of the table. So I hope that those people are absolutely nailed to the wall for doing that. They deserve I it. I mean, look, the, we were talking about Hillsborough the other day, Philip, and you got like Hillsborough and like Stardust as well, and all these disasters. Yeah. And and please, the family have got justice for their for their loved ones. Well, it's brilliant. I, mean, the, 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 it is I thought there's one on the news tonight. Mary McDermott, I think her name was or mm. McDermott. She lost three of her kids in the fire. Yeah. And then her husband walked out on her, but he couldn't stand the pressure of it afterwards. So she, her life is totally ruined. There's justice for people like that. It's absolutely brilliant to see it. I heard her on the radio. She was like, yeah. and also I was listening to an article the other night, a podcast the other night, Philip. And it was they had Mark Lawrence on, a great Irish defender and Liverpool defender as well, um, yeah. back in the day. And he was saying how Heysel is very forgotten as a disaster. That Hillsborough gets all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Hillsborough gets all the mentions, Bradford gets all the mentions, but Heysel seems to be forgotten. Um, look, I, there's never been any justice for the Italian fans that lost loved ones that no. night. No. And do well, you, do, I, I don't know. Has there, or am I wrong on that? No, I don't, I'm not sure, Dom. I need to check that out. But one, one reason why they reckon it took so long for the Stardust victims to be compensated mm. was the area of Dublin they lived in. If that had happened in the south side in Dunleary or Fox Rock or somewhere over there, it would have been dealt with years ago. And that was a that's a horrible indictment of the way things were in the 80s in Ireland. The it north side have happened in the first, it wouldn't have happened yeah. in the first place because they were rightly said to me earlier, there would have been exits out. You would have got out. But should the exit locks were, were, hang were on, hang on, Philip. I just want to get this right. There were, there were just, yeah, and she's right. Mother. Because it was the north side, people went through the back doors and that. Because they were poorer. Because they were poorer. If they went in the south side, people would have paid on the door and then there wouldn't have been nobody well, trying to That could it. be a problem. I think I think the problem was there was a fire in a in, a, in an airing cover behind the bar. That's what caused yeah. the, the, the yeah. fall. But the fact that the, the, the gates were padlocked, probably to stop people getting in, as you yeah. rightly say. But that, that's no excuse. I mean, good God. You know, no. it's it it shows, it's mental now, really. It, was, it it shows how society was different to then to now, how bad things were. Because don't forget, you had mass immigration, mass unemployment. Yeah. Um, the country was in debt. The country was nearly broke. Yeah, you had you had the biggest scoundrel of them all as T Shock at the time, Charlie. That's right. I, you, I can guarantee to, if you lived on the south, if you lived on the south side in Dublin, you very, you mm -hmm. rarely went to the north side. Derby tells like, that to me. Derby said, if she, yeah. as a teenager, she, if she went over to the north side, couldn't. you couldn't. Yeah. A southsider couldn't go over to the north side of Dublin. No. You reckon they need, you need to show your passport going across the Tunnel Bridge? You know that's it's them and us, really. It's not so mm. bad now, but that's the way it was in the eighties. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, and anyway, look, listen, we're delighted that the boy they've got justice at long, long last. Anyway. I, I tell you what, in the summer, Philip, we've got to do goo boo. We have to do Goo Boo oh, yeah. as a podcast. Yeah. We're gonna. I well, tell you one thing, guys. What's that? Grotesque, unbelievable, bizarre, yeah. and unprecedented. Yeah. yeah. If you want a bizarre cover, <laughs> this could only happen in Ireland. <laughs> I swear to God, it wouldn't happen in any other country. <laughs> we are going to do it. It's the most bizarre. I've watched documentaries on it. Even now, sitting like I was watching a video on YouTube the other night, Philip, and I saw the. It, what Charlie Hartley said at the time, right? Now we all have to tighten our belts, right? And I'm <laughs> looking at I said to Dad, well, you see what this gobshite is talking about, tightening the belts, right? And the country, him we're, ordering we're, shirts for a thousand pound a pop from Paris. We're, sp we're, getting we're, spending, in specially. Yeah, we're spending more than what, what we can earn. And I'm looking at them thinking, Are you for real? <laughs> 
I mean, well, probably you watching that at the time, Philip, you, you were looking at it thinking, Jesus, yeah, maybe he's right. But looking back then very quickly, and then we're going to move on, talk football and the topics today. But looking back now, what you know about him now, Philip, to then, do you sit back and just shake your head and thinking, Jesus, how naive were we? Well, I'll tell you, there's a certain politician lives about a former politician lives about 10 miles from here right yeah who is a cattle dealer as well as a politician right and during yeah. the 80s he absolutely screwed every farmer from here to north on wouldn't pay them for the cattle he took yeah. off them you know and they threatened to bankrupt them yeah and if he'd been bankrupt they were brought down the government so who mm. paid off his bill charlie got it and won that's the corruption that was going on at that time that is I, can, I can tell you, I can make your hair stand on end now. Some of the story I can tell you about that lad, you know. And the other fella, he was on the late late show, and they, they do it as ten minutes to your doom clock. Yeah. And he was on about the the now. My father was in construction. We had our own construction business in England, and when we, when we moved to Monongar in, in eighty in the early eighties, eighty four, we come over. My dad found it very hard to get work over here so my dad started doing drinking ditches for farmers and things like this and farmers one farmer said to him give him a check for the work he said no don't cash that check to next week he says and my dad said yeah. why it says because it will bounce well yeah, that's it. this builder come over and because he wouldn't do the corruption with the government he was hounded he was literally hounded out of ireland back to luton again yeah. back to the great camp great city of luton that should be Destroyed by every them. every building contract that was awarded here during the 80s was accompanied yeah. by a wrong envelope. Yeah. So this fellow, this fellow was in Europe at the time. He was, I don't know if he was the European commissioner or it was something to do with the Europe linked to the government anyway at the time. I forget his name. And he, he your man's name was brought up. And the, he said there, he says, he's a fine man, but he hasn't been too well lately. And his wife's not too well either. And I never took no money for no. He gave him fifty thousand pound back then, which was a lot of money, Philip. Right? Yeah. And this fellow at this time, there was a there, what do you call that? An inquest going on about the corruption within government. I think it was around the time. Um, what's his name was um, not Bertie Ahern. Albert Reynolds was T shock. Yeah. So it was all about the corruption with Charlie Hardy and everything. Yeah. And this fellow from Luton. Major man lose his job in Europe and basically got Bertie Hearn nearly to resign as well. Because his son I remember was that. Watching... Tom something or was Tom something was his name. Tom. Yeah, Tom. Yeah, you know what I'm on about. Well, I know who you're on about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and hopefully it's all changed bad. now. That's how bad and that's how unbelievable the early 80s. As a as a young lad in the early 80s was like it, it, it it didn't affect us because we didn't know what was going on. But for my parents, living in Ireland, we lived in Mullingar. And to live in Ireland at that time, it, it must have been so stressful. Get on Tom Kilmartin. That's it. That's, 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 that's it. Good morning, Jared. That's the way you do it. Big one, Jared. Big up, Jared. Um, living in Ireland, it must have been bad. It, had, it must have been t stressful, Philip, to say the least. With, with everything that was happening with the economy and high people going high interest rates, high interest rates people leaving from Ireland mm -hmm. to it. How, di how, how difficult did you find it back then with a young family, Philip, and everything? It must have been stressful. Yeah, it, was tough. It, was tough. Sure. it was tough. Um, like interest rates were about 20% at that stage, you know, it's like compared to now, they were, they were really, really high. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really, really high. And uh, it was living hand to mouth, really. That's all you could do. Yeah. Yeah, but I remember living in Mullingar. We, we we lived on a farm in Mullingar, and our cows kept escaping. I mean, nothing. Jeremy Clarkson, do you know his his farm? I watched Clarkson farm the other night, Philip. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. I'm I must watch it now. Oh, you do. Him trying to be a farmer is the most funniest thing you'll ever. <laughs> yeah. But he brings so much about farming. I have to give him credit for doing that. He's learning. But he is learning. Um, Texas and then back at the, 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 the ranch. Um, 
Berlin is good. Berlin is a brilliant city, actually. A brilliant, fantastic place. And who else have we got? And Matthew saying, I need to visit Dublin. Yeah. Yeah. You can stay on both, go the south side and the north side. Yeah. Um, Ed M saying Stardust. Yeah, that's right. And Matthew, 1984 Europa League. See, they had a, a lunch at the ground yesterday for the 1984 team. Yeah. Um, and uh, Keith Birkinshaw was back at it. So. Yeah, it was. It was Sounds nice like to good... see him, wasn't it? Ah, yeah. Sounds like a good day out. And um, did Villa play much first team players? Yeah, pretty much first teams, pretty much mm -hmm. a full squad. There might be one or two changes, but no, Watkins is playing. They're all playing. So um, I don't know if McGinn is playing. I want to say he might be missing, um, but uh, they're still losing and uh, time is running out. Only five minutes to go. Jesus. They don't know the McGinn, McGinn, Tielemans, Douglas Deweese, full team. Full team. Anyway, Wexford. Yeah. Mm. We're going to win this year. Mayo, it's going to be a Mayo Wexford double header this year. Double championship for both. Oh, Villa just Yellow. scored. Oh. Villa just scored. So that takes it into extra time. 2 1, extra time, yeah. Um, yes, the Yellow <laughs> Bellies this year. We are, Mayo's going to win the football and Wexford's going to win the Harrowing. And uh, right, do okay. you know what? Very quickly on that, Philip, on that. Um, um, GAA, people are shouting from the rooftops. Now, you're a big GAA fan. Um, want the All Islands put back to their original September dates? Yeah. Do you agree with that? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. It's too it's too cramped at the minute. It's not yeah. fair on the players. Too many matches without enough uh, rest between them. Mm. I think it was a stupid was idea to bring it back to July. Wasn't it the first Sunday in September and the last yeah. Sunday in September? That was uh, a waste. Of no, the hurling was the first and the football was the third. I thought you said that. Yeah. But yeah. it was always in my house as a kid growing up with my my dad was more into football than hurling. Um but it was always that bit always sat down. I always remember sitting down with my dad on channel four watching New All Island final. <coughs> that for me growing up was like the big thing. Mayo getting to the odd all island final mm. and never winning and mm. um, losing. Um, can I just say that the the player for Aston Villa, I'm hoping it's going to be knocked out for VAR, Matty Cash. Yeah. The well-known crippler of Tottenham players every time even we meet. That's true. Um, we've got Liam Lawler, Pod Patrick Flynn, Podrick Finn, that was his name. That was oh, yeah, your Patrick man's Flynn. name. I've yeah. got three houses and I got the port for the <laughs> Your man asked him. Yeah, I've got three. And I'm looking at thinking, and this is like in the 90s when people are finding it tough as well. It wasn't great. Like the economy wasn't brilliant. There was before the Celtic Tiger. And he said, I've got three houses, one in Mayo, oh. one in Dublin, and one in... And you know, it's very hard to keep all of them. And I said, my heart fucking bleeds for you. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Um, yeah. yeah. There were fine, there were a few fine gentlemen of their time, Philip. But yeah, that podcast will be done. It's going to be... I can't wait for that. That's going to be a cracker. It is. Paul Brown says, Dermot, at least the music was good. Yeah, it was, actually. I still think 80s music is the best decade for music ever. Uh, no, I go back to the late 60s and early 70s myself, but uh, yeah, the but times like, of uh, Deep Purple and Black yeah. Sabbath, The Stones, um, stuff like that. That's just my own personal favourites. Yeah. So. Now, my young lad loves Black Sabbath. Now, he loves all that sort of, like, early Black Sabbath and rock so mm. my young lad goes back to the 1940s music in america the blues proper blues rhythm and blues oh, some great blues. I, love, I love the old Ameri american blues I, he, I he's it. a great fan of bo diddley oh yeah yeah hey, bo diddley. and chuck he loves chuck berry bo diddley he loves all that sort of music bo and diddley with his square guitar you know yeah mm. and the and his sheriff's hat on yeah that's it and he said to me he was on um what was your man's name that did the music shows in america in the 50s and 60s ed sullivan um, ed sullivan he was the first ed bo diddley before 10 years for elvis went on there they wouldn't show him from the waist down because he was always that's right. moving all that's right that's right that's right that's right and then and then i was they did that and there was 10 years later yeah i know yeah. anyway yeah anyway, music for me, back to the football Fleetwood Mac for me. I I love been listening a lot of Fleetwood Mac and Stevie Nicks. Yeah, I yeah. Like for me. And uh, Gerard says goal Villa, goal stands, and a lot yeah. of hard tackling going on. 
Oh, Matty Cash mm. would love that. Matty Cash is right in his element there. Yeah. Now, Philip, a bad night for Man City and Lego Man last night. Um, where do you start apart from laughing your head well, off at Arsenal? Um, um, Man City, <laughs> I can't take three hours of my life back from that watch along, Philip. It was brutal. It was absolutely brutal. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say I, I I only came I as I said I came in and just in the penalty shootout was starting. Like it seemed City should have won that game easily in, in normal time. Yeah, the Real Madrid had no intention of attacking. One they one shot, I think, and that was the one they scored with, and that was it. Mm. Yeah. So look what, what where do you put down Real Madrid? Real Madrid weren't great last night, Finn. Why? You Real, Madrid, Real, Madrid Real Madrid to... used the experience, Dermot. Real Madrid have won that trophy, was it, 14 yeah. times? They're the most experienced team yeah. you can get. I'd hate to play against them at any stage because they never say die. They mightn't be playing no. football, but they're, they're confused and, and, and uh, can, um, really squeeze the life out of you the way they play defensively. Hmm. I mean, the bit I saw the game in highlights, it was 11 men behind the ball the whole time. You know, yeah. God Almighty wouldn't have broken them yeah. down. Do you know, I, I was watching it last night, and City should have won that. Should have won that in 90 minutes. But well, De Bruyne played, missed a great chance. After he scored, did. he blew, ballooned it over mm. in the highlights that I saw. Yeah. And what, and what the was wrong with Haaland? Haaland is, is, is Haaland a flat-track bully? Yeah. He can't hack it against good teams. No. And he asked to come off last night. He actually says to Pep, at the start of the extra time, I want to come off. Oh my God. Now, if that was even a worse strike, have you ever known the Spurs player to say, I want to come off? No. Yeah. I'm just wondering if he'd been on the pitch when the penalties came, would he put his name up, his hand up to take a penalty? Because I don't that, think that's, so. that's, where, that's where your leaders come out when you come to penalty mm. shoot. Look at Luka Modric. First yeah. man up to take the penalty. You know, uh, I know he missed it, but. I don't think Haaland would. I, I don't know. I, I, I've always had my doubts about him. He's good at putting mm. the ball in the net, but nothing else. He, I watched it. He worked hard in the first half, Philip. I must admit, he did work hard. But right. it was, uh, I, I, Ed's right. It was such a tactical battle last night. It was like, who will, and once Madrid went ahead, it was like, right, we're going to sit back and defend and defend. Madrid got their first corner in 106 minute. Yeah, yeah. I, it was on Arsenal. Do you know? Is it is it a missed opportunity for Arsenal or good performance from Bayern Munich for what? I only saw the highlights too, Philip. But for what? I yeah, saw. I saw the highlights. I saw the first fifteen minutes of this mm. game, and I thought Arsenal were pretty good. I have to say, they were. They looked mm. like they were controlling it. But Bayern were quite happy to sit back and let them come at them, you know. But mm. uh, the second half wore on. I believe Bayern put the, put the, the the stamp on the match. Eric Dyer had a brilliant game, which is you know. Yeah. <laughs> It's quite hard for Spurs fans to understand or believe, even. Um, yeah. But like you know, what they've done there is that they've knocked that's two bad that's two bad games in a row for Arsenal now. Well, three if you count the draw at Highbury with uh, Bayern last week. So hopefully that's not the dent in there. And you really Arsenal play twice before we play them. Yeah, they have a game this week and they've won the one during the week during the midweek as well. So mm. let's hope that they're they're tired out and exhausted by the time they come to uh, us because we did it two years ago. We finished yeah. them off. Let's do it again this time. I, I think we will. Um, we do have a lot of build up that week, Philip. We've got the we got the debate show between us and the armory coming that week, which should be fun. You and me yeah. versus um Bobby and Brenny from the armory. So that should be a lot of fun. Ed M says, I enjoyed the first half oh. City Real was a real tactical battle um last mm. night. He says, watching both City and the Goons. Have we much to worry about, Dermot? I don't think so, Philip. Do you? I think the two of them could be absolutely exhausted and out on their feet by the time they play us. Yeah. We're going to be fresh, you know, hopefully anyway. Yeah. Um, wh who do you think is going to win the semi-finals, Philip? Who who's your... Well, you have, to, you have to go for... You have to go for Man, Man United against Coventry. But do you know something? I have a sneaking feeling after last night that... Uh, the no, that the Chelsea Champions League playing, final... Oh, sorry. Who, who okay, think? Okay, talking about. Yeah. Uh, Champions League final, I think, will be uh, Real Madrid and uh, PSG. I'm going for an all German final. Okay. I think Bayern Munich have the beating of of um, 
of um oh yeah i've jumped ahead of topic no mind we'll come back to that um i think i think it's gonna be an all german fight i said it last night it's written in the stars harry kane's gonna win his first major trophy at wembley oh maybe maybe i mean you, you can't rule them out i no. mean I, I use the same criteria for a team for Bayern. maybe playing man playing real madrid as man city you know mm. they're gonna have their work cut out you know I think uh, Roma Tree the yeah, I mean, I, I, in all fairness, I would like to see Harry Kane get his get his trophy, mm. you know. And Eric Dyer. Who would have thought Eric Dyer had a Champions League weather medal at the start of this season, you know? But, yeah. I mean, uh, if there was a decent striker last night for Man City, Harry Kane, would he would would Man City won that game last night? Oh, they would have done, yeah. They would have done. I mean, they missed a, they missed a few chances. Mm. Uh, yeah, they probably would have done. Yep, yeah, probably. Yeah. Now, yeah. um, Fabrizio has been out on Twitter again today, Philip, or X, saying that Spurs are going to have a busy summer. Um, five lightly, um, five lightly Spurs stars are leaving the summer. They are um, Le Celso, um, Don Bele, Don Bele, uh, who else? Um, Joe Roden, um, Reg Leon. Um, I Jeff forget Spence. who the fifth one is. Ed Spence. Jeff Spence. Hmm. Now, a number nine is a must, isn't it, Philip? We have to get a striker in yeah. this summer. And mm. There's no mucking around. Do you, do you want a striker or do you want a winger type striker? What do you? No, want we've enough. We've enough do? winger strikers. We want a striker, yeah. an absolutely dedicated striker. We've enough winger strikers. We've got Sonny. We've got Kulu. We've got Johnson. We need someone down the middle. Someone down the middle. Yeah. And, and who do you want to see? And also, do you want to see a, a proper number six, Philip, or do you think? Oh, I look, I've been saying this for a while. Hoybier could be your man for that. Yeah, I don't know. Will he will he stay? His agent's probably pushing for a move, you know. Um, do you know who I'd go for? And it's uh, probably highly unlikely we'd get him. Ollie Watkins. As a striker. Good striker. Good striker. I tell you, yeah. I wouldn't mind that. I, no. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be mind of that, Philip, either. No. And we got I get a good a really top class defensive midfielder in. I'm trying to mm. I'm, I'm struggling to find out who we could get that would fit that bill, but we need yeah. one because Newcastle came through us like knife, a knife through butter the other day. You know, mm. we can't have that. No, can't have that. I, I think Hoybier okay. Oh, I would love to go for Kimmich. I would love to go Kimmich. and get Kimmich. Yeah, Kimmich wants to leave Bayern Munich. A great goal he, he does. scored last night. He, he wants to leave. <laughs> Let's take Harry Kane put in the word for us. You yeah. know, um, yeah, Kimmich would be a brilliant one. Absolutely, brilliant. I would love Kimmich, and I know he wants to leave. I'd love Kimmich at, um, at Tottenham. Look for me, Philip. A striker is a must. Is a must, mm. and also a number six is a must. Basuma is not going to cut it for me anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. Basuma for me is done. Um, Philip, just very quickly on the League of Ireland, um, a number of teams have spoken to the ECA, the European Clubs Association, to. Um, to leave them, to join, to leave the FAI and to join the European Club Association. Um, it's an article today in the Irish Independent and it's about clubs wanting more control over the money to get for the TV rights and the commercial deals that they can that they can bring. Now, I was speaking to Dave earlier about this, Philip. Is it more leverage for the clubs to use against the FAI or do you think from them getting their own deals would be better for Irish soccer? Because we all know I'm, how corrupt the FEI is. I'm not up to speed with that ECA thing, Dermot. It's very hard for me to comment on it. What would that mean? Would that mean they would leave the League of Ireland? No. They would have their own right to to do their own contracts for TV deals and, mm. and um, I can't, I can't their own see commercial. That I can't see that well, ever the, happening. But let's, let's face it. There's not enough of the teams are big enough draws, big enough attractions for that. So yeah. I don't know. I'd be I'd be very wary if that ever came to, to pass. It might be good for the clubs if it did, but you can be sure the League of Ireland would, would fight it every inch of the way and find some legal loophole to, to knock it on the head. But well, could it be used as leverage though to get a better deal out of the FAI though? You can try, but you can't get blood out of a stone. They don't have any money. Simple as that. They don't have no money to pay them. You know? And we still can't find the manager. But let's not talk about mm. that. That's like the rabbit in the room. We all know he's going to get the job, Mr. Blobby. Um, anyway, Philip. Uh, <laughs> I know Legman says this is his sister. Um, FA changes to the FA Cup format, Philip. Yeah, um, no replays. 
Mm. No replays. Now, this is the this is the remember. Uh, I did yes, I did console them. He was very unconsolable last night, Gerard. And then full time <laughs> goes in extra time. Philip, the fourth and fifth rounds plus the quarterfinals will now be played on the weekends, mm. exclusive for Premier League fixtures. Fourth round will be playable, will now run from Friday to Wednesday, allowing six days of FA Cup football. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Removal of replays from the first round proper onwards in light of the expansion of European competitions. And then this one, Tottenham F. This was a stat I found earlier, Philip. I couldn't believe it. Out of 101 of our ties taken to replays, three of them were FA Cup finals, 1901. 1981 and 1982. So, look, mm. I think they need to leave the FA Cup well alone, Philip. They're, they're dinkering yeah. around with it. They're, they really are. And also this one as well. The FA Cup final will now be played on the penultimate weekend of the Premier League season and on a Saturday, exclusive of Premier League games. There will be no Premier League fixtures played on the Friday prior to the final to allow full focus on the Wembley showpiece. Philip, are they tinkering with the competition too much that is now yeah. not the same as it was when you and me were growing up? Okay, maybe the replay thing is okay. But everything Sorry. else about the FA Cup, there's no need to no need no. to change it. But they've done it, you know. So I don't, I, I don't agree with it. Imagine to, taking a uh, a league weekend or take it, making no matches in the league just to play the FA Cup final. The FA Cup final was always played the Saturday after the league finished. Mm. Always. Mm. And they should leave it that way. They should leave it. It was always, and it was the biggest show piece of the season, wasn't it, Philip? The FA Cup. And well, it, it, the was. FA... it was. Well, I haven't watched an FA Cup final in years. Well, we are this year because we're doing a watch along to it. But <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying that. I'm not, I'm not really interested if Spurs aren't in it. I don't really care. But no. its teams have lost. It lost its impetus the year Manchester United pulled out back in the early 2000s. It's never, ever got it back, I don't think, since that. No. I, I, I think the FA and the Premier... I think the Premier League, as great as the Premier League is, Philip, has now been the root of all evil in football now. The Premier League <coughs> has killed yeah. what the game was. It's all about money. It's all about corruption. It's all about bigger... Money for bigger clubs and lesser clubs getting nothing. The pyramid is rigged in a way um, that the bigger clubs get richer and the poorer clubs get poorer. And that's down yeah, to the yeah. Premier League, Philip. And I, I, I'm I, sorry. I, I do think they should have left it as it was. Yeah. Yeah, I can get And it was all, what was it down to at the time? Why was the Premier League formed, Philip? Because of money. TV money. rights. Yeah. The TV companies run. The TV companies run this term, not the FA. I mean, look, look at look at the Arsenal now. We now know the Tottenham game can be fixed now that Arsenal have gone out of the Champions League. Mm. But that's only up to last night. What if somebody wants? That's next weekend. What if someone hasn't got their flights booked? Mm. You no, know, it's just the fans don't matter. It's just the TV rights cause uh, our, our God to the to the FA. They just mm. bow down to them every single time without. Newcastle half twelve last Saturday for a Spurs team ridiculous. Four hundred miles up north at six o'clock in the morning. See, see Spurs get beat four 0 that, 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 That's punishment. Mm. Look, do you agree with Ed here? And I, sorry, when we aren't going to get your comment in a minute. He says I can see, and I can see when the FA Cup finals played abroad in USA, Qatar, Saudi, unfortunately. Philip, we had this debate weeks ago about. It's going to remember, happen. It's gonna happen. It, yeah, do you remember it came out that the Americans are trying to move some Premier League games, a 39th game, to the United yeah. States of America? Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's right. Well, that where 39th do you draw game the line the with FA this final. Yeah, where do you draw the line? There's no that's line to be drawn down because the, you and me and the fans have absolutely no say in it whatsoever. Some sultan in Qatar or a, a sheikh in, in Saudi Arabia will offer the FA a ridiculous amount of money to bring the FA Cup final. Out to out to uh, uh, Qatar or Saudi Arabia or, or US even, and mm. they'll be of they'll just go. Thanks very much. Pocket the money and away they go. Of course they will. Mm. It will happen, and it'll happen inside the next two or three seasons. I think. Yeah, it will. Where, where do we stand? Where do you, what I mean? Where do we draw the line, Philip? Where do we, as football fans, say right enough's enough? Well, see, what what, can, what do you do, there? No matter what we say, they're going to change their mind. 
They got this four headed deals. Say it's a North London derby. Yeah. And right, and just say you bought tickets for the North London derby, right? Yeah. You get your season ticket and you know North London Derby's going to be in such and such a date, right? Yeah. And then it's announced, sorry, the game's been moved to New Jersey. Oh, well, it'll, it'll, it'll be announced a season or two in advance. They won't do but that. The, the, yeah, but the point is, Philip, you've got fans that are proper fans won't be able to afford to get over there. Well, I know that. Did you know that? Yeah, absolutely. So you've got where, fan, I, no I, fans. I rest my case. Where do the, fan, why do, where do the fans come into this? They don't. Yeah. No, dis no, no disrespect to any Americans watching who do watch this channel. Well, what I'm going to say is, but how does an American get what a North London derby means? Like to you and me, we get it. Mm. You, an American sitting there or a Saudi Arabian person or a Qatari fan, he's not going to have the same infamous or the same, you <clears> know, <throat> He's not going to know what a North London derby means to him. It's just another football match. I don't. To be honest with you, I don't think it'll ever come that match will be played outside the country. I think the FA Cup is a much easier target because it's a one-off final. It's a one-off big occasion. That's the one I think they'll go for. Now, even the Carabao yeah, but, Cup could be at risk or something like that. You know, but the FA Cup plays at Wembley at the end of the season. That is what the FA Cup is. It's the road to yeah, Wembley. It's to not know. the road to Qatar. Up to now, but money talks. The, the yeah. day they move the FA Cup is the day the FA Cup dies for me. Yeah, possibly. It, it's not. Possibly. You know yourself, Philip. It was always the road to Wembley, mm. the road to the Twin Towers. Well, and that was the reverse, road. reverse it in the way we've done. What do you think? Now, just say uh, Jacksonville, whatever you call them, are playing the Chicago mm. Bears in the NFL, and it's mm. moved to Tottenham. There's probably boys in Chicago and Florida sitting there saying, oh, I'd love to go with that match, but I can't go. But the same thing yeah. is happening probably in America with the NFL yeah, games. Yeah, but they've, been, they've yeah. been playing American football back in the 90s at Wembley. Oh, I know that, but I'm just saying now they've now, but they're increasing the volume of the games now. They're yeah, I know what you're getting at. I know what you're getting at. You know, you know, yeah. It's the same thing. People yeah. might want to go to games over, they can't go. But again, we're just going to have to suck it up because it's not going to change. We're not going to change the opinion. And money talks, and I'm afraid they always will. And the FA love money. I, I tell you, football from you and me can remember it back in the day, Philip. It's totally changed. If we if we went back and told our younger selves what football's going to be like now, I think we'd have told our older selves, you're, you're taking the piss here. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Anyway, Wayne says, Absolutely. I'm guessing they're yeah, I'm guessing they're getting rid of replays to benefit all the teams in Europe. The final itself should be the closing game of the season. Yeah, it should be, be. yeah. Football, yeah. Look, I, I don't know for the I, I it's really gaunt me that. It's really mm. gaunt me that. Um, look, any other thing, Philip? Look, please, above my head, we do have a QR code. It is our official partner, Wrath Esports Energy. So please do hit the QR code and you will get 10% off if you do use the code THFCTID. If you can, as you can see, we're only three away from 1,800. I don't mind if it's your goldfish or your garden gnome. Don't even care if it's your next door neighbor's dog. Just set up a YouTube channel and hit the subscription button. It is free. It doesn't cost you anything. And while you're there, pick them up a membership. 99 We start at 99 cent, don't we, Philip? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cheapest chips. Cheaper Cheapest than chips. Chip. Cheap, cheap. You get the cheap membership and also you get the good looking Philip Brady and me. <laughs> there you go. What more do you want? What more do you want on the seven o'clock in the evening? Um, any yeah. news you want to talk about, Philip? For the last next five minutes, sort of thing. Um, no, honestly, pity with no game this weekend. I'd love to get playing. I'd love to play Manchester City this Saturday. They'll be knackered yeah. after that Real Madrid game. Yeah. Really well, we, we are doing the FA Cup semi final, aren't we? This weekend, you and me, we are going to do a watch yeah. along to it. Yeah, one on Saturday. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm I'm in Tottenham on Monday on my tour. So yeah. Tell people about that, Philip, because you're quite excited about yeah, that. Yeah, I got, I, got I got a present for Christmas uh, from my kids. Uh, it's a it's a it's go a tour of the stadium on the next Monday morning at ten o'clock. But it's been given by the legendary Ozzy Ardiles. So um, I met Ozzy once before here in Dublin at a function about five or six years ago. I got a photograph taken with him. So I'm going to flash the photo and try and get a few promo things done here with him. You know. I'm, I'm going to be filming the thing anyway, so it'll be up here on the channel to have a look at in due course, you know. Philip has been given strict instructions what to Scott, what Ozzy to say. <laughs> yeah. 
Spurs, <laughs> That's a... Spurs are on <laughs> their way to Wembley, huh? Yeah, on THFC uh, till I die. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And also, I'd be big up again. I know we've done it before, but the fantastic uh, achievement of the girls' team to get to the FA mm. Cup final, the I women's just... FA Cup final. I, and uh, the play I Manchester to watch to that, Philip. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it'd be a great. Would day you go out. to it? Would you actually go to it? No, I won't be. Unless I'm over the Burnley match, so I won't be able to get over yeah. to that one as well. I yeah. would love to go to it if I could get a ticket for it. Eleven thousand tickets have been awarded to Tottenham for that final. Is that all? That is it. Eleven thousand. Yeah, eleven thousand tickets each. That's team crazy. How many Manchester United get? Eleven thousand each. Well, that's 11, okay. You get all their fans given London anyway, so there's no problem yeah. with that. You know? Eleven thousand two hundred and fifty tickets. No, that's crazy. And the rest of fans will would turn up. Right, who's playing? You yeah, know? mad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should be thirty thousand. I'm sure there's a lot of teams, Tottenham fans, who want to go and support the girls that day. Of course, there is. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Daniel Lee is going to get his third major trophy in twenty six years. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's worth yeah. celebrating, Philip. Third major trophy in 26 years. Um, just last thing, Philip. Um, I know we've got the end of the season coming up. What's been your highlight so far of the season, Philip? What's the one highlight of the season that do you think? Mm. Do you know what? For me, I, I, because we are coming into the end of April, beginning of May. We are coming to the end of the season now. So. Um, I need time you... to think about that one, don't yeah. I? I really, at the moment, I just can't think of. Uh, okay, I suppose beating Liverpool at home that was a big one. Yeah. Um, uh, Sheffield United comeback, for me. Sheffield United you... comeback against that. That was that was incredible. I have to say. Watching and, you um... do a knee slide off camera, <laughs> doing that. That for me, I'll never forget that watch along. Honestly, the company yeah. was so. You were ahead of me in that watch along as well. And yeah. all I see is you running and doing the knee slide, that, and they go, "What the fuck's it? Oh, right, he's good! Yay!" <laughs> yeah, that was good. The low yeah. points, a couple of low points. I think Brighton yeah. away, Fulham away, and Newcastle away. They've got to be the low points. But we've got Arsenal to come, Philip. We've got Man City to come. We've got Liverpool to come. Yeah. We've got yeah. a few run-ins. Um, Ed M says the price of an NNF tickets in America, it might be cheaper to go to. Yeah, that's America. true. That's true. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. true. This year. Um, Philip, that's it. That is the end of the Daily Hotspurs news show. Um, I hope everyone's enjoyed it. Hope everyone's enjoyed the new time too. Um, <laughs> it, it's we've got a few good people, a few chats in Philip. So I think the time's suiting everyone. Um, yeah. we've got a lot of things coming up in the summer, haven't we? We've got all the Euro <laughs> games we're covering, watch alongs. I'm going to do the yeah. afternoon games, and um, the boys over full time network are going to do the evening game so me and philip you're going to get all the games covered here um we've got shows coming up i think we're going to do an end of season show philip on the 21st of may hopefully you're not in dublin okay. that day what day of the week's that that's a tuesday that's really worrying mm -hmm. me now mm -hmm. i might yeah, have to change that to a monday yeah that's my you... tuesday hours. yeah <laughs> the um, last game is on the 8th 19th isn't it it is mm -hmm. yeah so uh, the 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 review of the season. I might put it onto a Monday, actually. I yeah. might do that Monday. Um, yeah, and we've got the cock. We've got the on. We were supposed to do a pre record for the Unholy Trinity podcast. Um, I want to see can we do that Saturday at some point because I'm busy tomorrow now. So we're going to have to do that mm. at some point between now and Sunday. Get that out on Sunday. Um, but yeah, do you know what, Philip? Channel's changing. Yeah. We're, we're getting there. Philip will have a new background by next season. He will have Ozzy Odilis behind him, giving him a hug, saying, <laughs> yeah. you're now part of the Ozzy Odilis fan club. Big up to Carl Simpson. Says, big up, gents, and everyone in the chat. Come on, everyone. Hit the subscription. Three array for 1,800. Be nice yeah, to get on, there, wouldn't it, Philip? Only three to go. Come on. Hit yeah. the button. Hit the we button. want to get to fight. Where... Very quickly, Philip, if you had a milestone for the channel where to get to, would it be 5 or 10k you would love to get to? Well, I'll get past two first, then I'd set five. Yeah, five. There you mm. go. We will yeah. get that. Well, listen, thank you for watching. Okay. We are back tomorrow, so please hit the like button, subscription button, notification bell and everything. Philip's off to polish off his um, his goo-boo book to get, <laughs> to get ready on, 
on the time. Yeah, someone has to return that phone call he got earlier. That's what he has to do now. So, yeah. yeah. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to go and keep my dinner. That's what I'm going to do. Good night, everyone. Okay. God bless and Come on, you Spurs. See you tomorrow. Big Ange, Trust. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow.